welcome uh, to uh, to a MOOC lecture on fundamentals of materials processing part 2 this is a continuation of uh, an earlier course on fundamentals of materials processing and this is the module 2 of uh, part 2 in this we will discuss thin film deposition techniques so th this is from uh, week 5 to 8 of uh, fundamentals of materials Processing Part 2. My name is Dr. Anshugor and I will be taking you through various thin film deposition techniques. So, before we uh, discuss uh, thin film deposition techniques, we should understand uh, what kind of thin films we are talking about. So, uh, my uh, main aim with this course and uh, in next 4 weeks will be to take you through various thin film deposition techniques which are mainly used in semiconductor uh, companies or or industries okay uh, you can utilize these techniques in various other places for uh, coatings and uh, surface passivation um, uh, etc but the my main goal would be to introduce you to these techniques for the um, uh, keeping the background as semiconductor industry and as you know that semiconductor industry is um, multi billion dollar uh, industry and it works on purity of material okay so in this processing the purity is of very high importance okay so going through uh, the course outline is such in week 5 of this mooc lecture we'll uh, first start with introduction to vacuum technology and we'll discuss why we need vacuum to deposit thin films then we will start with various thin film deposition uh, techniques such as physical vapor deposition in which we will discuss one technique called thermal evaporation. Then uh, in the next week I will reduce you to uh, some plasma physics because for many thin film deposition techniques we use plasma very extensively. So, I will introduce uh, you to plasma physics and then we will talk about one of the physical vapor deposition techniques which is based on plasma called sputtering. Okay. So, uh, first we will uh, learn evaporation then sputtering and then we will in week 7 we will go to chemical vapor deposition okay. and in this chemical vapor deposition under this we will discuss various techniques which is called LPCVD or low pressure chemical vapor deposition, PECVD or uh, plasma enhanced uh, chemical vapor deposition or MOCVD which is metal organic chemical vapor deposition. So, we will discuss all these uh, chemical vapor deposition techniques and in the week uh, in the last week of this course we will discuss uh, how do these film grow, how do these film nucleate, how do this uh, film grow, what is the morphology, how we can control the morphology and the property of these uh, thin films by changing their uh, growth conditions. Uh, we will also uh, discuss some of the special techniques and various applications. Okay. Uh, we will go through for what kind of material and what kind of applications, which kind of uh, technique is. Uh, more suitable. Uh, in this uh, course, there will be a, one assignment every week uh, based on the lectures or topics covered in that week and mainly uh, uh, these will be multiple choice questions. Uh, I will be using two reference books in this course. One is Material Science of Thin Films by Milton Oering from Academic Press and the second one is Thin Film Deposition Principles and Practice by Donald L. Smith. So, this is the course outline and let me uh, first go to first topic. So, vacuum technology, what is in vacuum and why we need vacuum? These are two important questions to understand before we go to the trouble of creating vacuum. Okay. So, what is in vacuum? We understand that vacuum has nothing okay. and how do we create vacuum and why it is uh, required? Uh, to understand that we need to understand how if there is no vacuum what is there right. So, what do we have around us? It is air, some kind of gas 
right? If we uh, take an empty chamber, uh, what will be inside? It will be uh, some gas, mainly air, okay? So, the behavior of vacuum or this air is or gas, it is very important to understand to create vacuum and uh, that will also answer our question why we need vacuum. So, first to understand the behavior of gases, we uh, go back to kinetic theory of gases. So, in any gas, we understand that the atoms or molecules of that gas are at random motion. So, they are always moving around, colliding with, e with each other and then uh, changing their direction, colliding with the uh, walls of the vessel in which uh, they are kept. So, it is a random motion and each atom or molecule might have a different velocity. So, the distribution of ve velocities of a gas at a temperature T. So, this is T is temperature in Kelvin scale. Okay. So, uh, given the temperature of the gas, we can have a distribution of velocities which is given by Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. Okay. And this distribution is given by the fraction of atoms or molecules which will have velocity v is given by this expression given here. Okay. So, this f v is a fraction of atoms or molecules of the gas which have velocity v. So, we can plot this uh, fraction as a function of velocity. For one dimension gas, if we have only take all the gas atoms are moving only in one direction, namely the x direction then we can also uh, write this expression for one dimension. But we know that in a chamber or vessel, the gas atoms are moving in all three directions. So, we will be using this expression mainly. Okay. How does this distribution look like? Let me plot here. So, this uh, y axis uh, would be my fraction of the gas atoms or molecule with velocity v and I can plot as a function of velocities. Okay. So, this is a schematic plot and I can plot this for hydrogen. So, let us say hydrogen at uh, 25 degree C room temperature, the plot will be something like this. Okay. Let me write it down H 2 at 25 degree C and if uh, uh, we heat this gas, we, sh, uh, we understand that the thermal energy of atoms or molecules will be very high and they will be moving at a higher speed. So, we can plot another curve for higher temperature which would look like something like this. So, this is H 2 at say some higher temperature around 1200 degree C. Okay. So, this is the distribution of velocity of gas molecules and atoms. Now, since we have a distribution, then we need to define some average or maximum values of these uh, velocities to calculate the properties of that gas. Okay. So, we can define maximum velocity, which is uh, 2RT by m, where R is the gas constant and m is the molecular weight of the gas atom or molecule. Okay. So, these are r and m. We can define maximum velocity which would be the peak of this curve either here or this value will be v max. Next, we can define an average velocity which will be square root of 8 r t by pi m. Okay. Uh, this would be a average velocity. What is mainly used in calculation is root mean square velocity. So, we take a square of uh, um, all the velocities and take the average of that uh, square velocity and the square root. So, this quantity is the most important quantity which is RMS velocity okay? and this is 3 RT by m. 
Now we have a velocity dist distribution. We know a property of any gas in a chamber is called pressure. Okay. What is pressure? Uh, if a gas is kept in a chamber, the atoms or in molecules of that gas will be impacting because they are moving about, they will be uh, impacting on the wall of the chamber or vessel and then they will change their velocity. When they change their velocity, they change their momentum. This change in momentum is force and force per unit area is pressure. Okay? So, the gas pressure is exerted on the chamber walls because the uh, random motion of these gas molecules or atoms, they are impacting on the chamber wall and they are changing their velocity and direction. Okay? So, pressure we can say depends on the velocity and velocity depends on temperature. So, from this we can define the pressure as this quantity and from this we can also define gas law PV is equal to nRT. Okay? Now, once we have defined the pressure, we have to measure it and there should be some units to measure pressure. There are several units in fact to measure pressure. One of the most popular is one atmosphere. One atmosphere is the normal atmospheric pressure of air that we feel uh, in our everyday life which is equivalent to 760 millimeter of mercury at 0 degree C and which is equal to 10 approximately equal to 10 to power minus 5 Pascal. Okay? And this is also called TOR. So, the three important uh, units that we see in vacuum technology is Pascal, TOR or BAR. And these uh, using these expressions you can convert one into another. Okay? So, this is about pressure. Now, remember we started with what is vacuum or what is not in vacuum. Of course, we know that vacuum means less gas, means less pressure. So, how less? Okay? We can define different levels of vacuum based on pressure. So, low vacuum can be defined from 1 atmosphere down to 1 Pascal. Okay? So, 1 atmosphere to 1 Pascal is uh, low vacuum, 1 Pascal to 0 0.1 Pascal is medium vacuum, 0 0.1 to 10 to power minus 5 Pascal is high vacuum, uh, 10 to power minus 5 Pascal to 10 to power minus 10 Pascal is ultra high vacuum and less than 10 to power minus 10 Pascal we can call it extremely high vacuum or extreme UHV. Okay? For thin film deposition uh, purposes, we mainly use high vacuum to ultra high vacuum, so in this region. So, we need to understand how to create this level of vacuum. Okay? So, this is also we need to understand. So, this is the definition of vacuum. So, we take out gas atoms or molecules from a vessel and we create vacuum. But why do we need vacuum? So, we understand in uh, this in two terms, one is called mean free path. Now, what is mean free path? Mean free path is an average distance then a gas atom or molecule travels um, before it collides with another atom or molecule. Okay? So, this is an average distance then uh, a gas atom travels okay? and um, this lambda mean free path can be calculated using this exp this expression so this is mean free path distance okay and you can see that uh, this d is uh, diameter of the gas atom or molecule p is pressure t is temperature n is uh, avogadro's number and R is gas constant. So, you, from this you can see that mean free path is inversely proportional to 
pressure okay which means that if you increase the pressure your mean free path is become smaller which is very intuitive because if you have higher pressure keeping the temperature same which means you have more gas atoms or molecules if there are go more gas atoms or molecules are present then there will be very frequent collisions between them if the collisions are very frequent then the average distance traveled between two collision would be less which is mean free path okay so th this is one reason of creating vacuum two by creating vacuum we are decreasing pressure thereby we are increasing mean free path we'll understand this why we want to increase uh, mean free path when we come to deposition techniques so but uh, that's the reason number 1 what is the second reason let's understand what is happening at any surface uh, which is kept uh, in a gas environment so as i had said that for uh, semiconductor industry purity is of the essence and we are depositing thin films sometimes these thin films are uh, very thin of the order of few nanometers say tens of nanometers sometimes even 5 nanometer if we are depositing 5 nanometer thin film which means very few monolayers atomic monolayers right okay now as i had said that any gas which is kept in a chamber uh, is uh, interacts with the chamber wall okay now suppose if i clean one of my substrates on which i want to deposit a thin film and bring it in chamber in which there is some gas present the atoms and molecules of the that gas will be impinging or interacting with my surface that i have introduced now what is the rate of that interaction it can be calculated this is uh, the rate of impingement impingement on surface uh, in moles per centimeter square per second so uh, you, uh, this is p over 2 pi mrt where all the symbols have their usual meaning so per centimeter square of the surface per second these many number of moles are impinging on the surface okay this can be converted to this uh, this expression uh, where we have used uh, some uh, numerical numbers and we have converted number of molecules okay in this expression pressure is in torr okay so now these many number of gas molecules are impinging per unit area per unit time on the surface any surface inside the chamber now assume that every gas atom or molecule which comes in contact is uh, gets attached to the surface okay and if it gets attached to the surface it forms a monolayer if it covers the entire surface if uh, all the um, every atom which is coming to the surface is getting attached slowly they will cover the entire surface and will have a monolayer okay so formation of monolayer and this tc is the time taking is the time taken to form a uh, this monolayer and uh, you can uh, calculate this and uh, assuming that your surface density is 10 to the power 15 atoms per uh, surface density surface density is approximately 10 to the power 15 atoms per centimeter square okay so if 10 to the power 15 atoms per centimeter square are impinging then i will get a monolayer okay and this will give me the time taken to have one monolayer formation okay suppose i want to deposit a film uh, let's assume i want to deposit copper okay i put my sample or my substrate in a chamber where there is a some oxygen present residual oxygen maybe just from air now this air 
molecules nitrogen and oxygen are also impinging on my copper surface. Some of these will also get attached to my copper surface and I want to deposit copper not copper oxide or oxygen, but I am getting that oxygen from the uh, ambient air. I want to avoid that. So, that is the reason number 2 to have vacuum because if you have lower pressure the impingement rate goes down and if and it takes longer to form a monolayer of the gas unintentional layer. This is summarized in this uh, nice graph where as you can see that uh, on y axis uh, on the right side it says monolayer formation time. Okay. At a pressure of say uh, this is 760 torr 1 atmosphere it takes less than 10 to power minus 4 second to form a monolayer. Okay. This is 10 to power minus 4. 10 to power minus 4 second you will form a monolayer of uh, gas atoms and if you decrease the pressure to somewhere around 10 to power minus 6 torr then it takes few seconds few tens or uh, around 10 seconds. Okay. If you decrease it further to somewhere around 10 to power minus 10 torr or 10 to power minus 8 torr then you will get approximately 1 hour. Okay. Now, within a fraction of this 1 hour say 20 minutes you can deposit copper okay. and the oxygen which is present in the environment is not able to form a monolayer. So, you will get high purity copper, but if the copper uh, if oxygen forms a monolayer within 10 to power minus 4 second then you will get mixed of copper and oxygen in your thin films. So, that is the reason to have vacuum for your high purity thin film deposition. Okay. Uh, we will stop here, uh, we have covered in this lecture um, the um, course outline and why we need vacuum for thin film deposition. Uh, thank you very much and we will join you in, in the next lecture uh, where we are going to discuss uh, how we create vacuum. Okay. Thank you.